Hi, this is Steve Sleeper, producer of the North Omaha History Podcast. It's a volunteer effort, but you can help us meet expenses by becoming a patron for as little as a dollar a month. Go to patreon.com slash Omaha. The list of patrons and the link to Patreon is in the show notes. You can also help by subscribing wherever you listen to podcasts and give us a five-star review. Thanks. Welcome to the North Omaha History Podcast with noted author and historian Adam Fletcher Sassy. Each week, Adam takes you on a guided tour through Omaha's dynamic past. For 50 years, the skies over North Omaha were clogged with glorious July 4th fireworks. The same park where those happened holds a history of golfing, picnics, after school and summer programs, and a lot more, including a long forgotten baseball history. So, Adam, tell us more about the history of Fontenelle Park. Steve, I want to start with the end. Check this out 108 acre park next to Ames Avenue and Fontenelle Boulevard that was established in 1893. It was built by a swamp that was made into a lagoon by 1918. And the park had a fine pavilion built in 1927, and it was home to a nationally famous baseball field. Now, the third thing that I want you guys to know before we start going is that the park officially opened in 1914 with a fireworks display. But those fireworks played a role from 1927 through 1974 when the VFW sponsored annual fireworks every year. That part is in a lot of people's imagination still today. Good memories. But to paint the story, Steve, I want to dial way back and go all the way back to the 1880s. Now, remember, the 1889, the city of Omaha was ruled by horse carriages, galloping horses, a couple of streetcars heading here, there, and everywhere, and a whole lot of ambition. They hired an East Coast landscape architect, this guy named Horace Cleveland. And Cleveland came to Omaha and laid out a big old plan and said Omaha needs to be connected with a whole series of parks and boulevards that look like parks. He wanted trees everywhere. He wanted flower displays. He wanted big open green spaces because Horace Cleveland believed that's what made a city unique and tied it together. It wasn't the only city in America to do that, but Omaha's execution of it was pretty cool at the time. And one of the things that they did in order to make it go, in 1891, they bought a big chunk of land next to Fontenelle Boulevard. Well, this is even before Fontenelle Boulevard was laid down. They bought this big old chunk of land. It had this swamp down in it that had been noted by the early settlers in the area. And nobody really wanted to buy the land. It was on a hillside. It wasn't that great. It didn't drain well. So the city bought it. They sagged it up, and they made it into a park over the next 20 years or so. They put in the trees. They put in the boulevard. The boulevard weaved down from the top of a hill by the Nebraska School for the Deaf, and it weaved right down to the Ames Avenue. And over the years, that park developed more and more. Starting around the 1910s, baseball started being played there. Maybe a little bit earlier. I'll tell you what did happen earlier, before the park was officially opened. There was a grove of trees, uh, big, tall, uh, coniferous trees, pine trees with beautiful needles and the whole thing that sat right towards the top of the hill. Not quite to the top, but towards it. And in these trees, there was a beautiful little pathway that was made by people walking over the same route again and again. Who knows how old that pathway was? Who old? Who knows how old those trees? Well, the trees were actually planted in the 1890s. They were part of that original effort to call it a park. That little path. It became known as Lover's Lane. And it's where these romantic couples of the time, of that era, they would ride their horse and buggy out to this new parkland. And they would stroll lovingly through the night lights, through the fireflies, and the stars up above, before street lamps were put in, before the whole city was clogged with houses, they would stroll through Fontenelle Park on Lover's Lane, exchanging smooches, wooing, and having those good old days. By the 1910s, baseball was being played there all the time. People loved it. They loved that whole entire open space. 
It was played down in the uh, eastern part of the park, and uh, people loved the game. I mean, Omaha had been explosive for baseball since 1880s. You know, since it really started to become popular anywhere in the United States, it was popular in Omaha. But when they started playing ball there at Fontenelle Park, it took off really fast and really big. By 1939, the city of Omaha proposed building its first municipal baseball stadium at Fontenelle Park. Dun, 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 dun. There was a golf course there. The golf course had opened in 1927. There was a beautiful pavilion there that's still there today. It was built in 1927. Every winter, the lagoon froze over, and kids would come and ice skate across it starting in the 1920s. There's a snack shack in the pavilion. People love to go there, have hot chocolate in the wintertime. Or lemonade in the summer. 1939, it was the end of a long Great Depression for Omaha. Tax money was hard to come by. But the federal government was handing out loans and, and securing grants and all kinds of things to help municipalities like the city of Omaha get their legs and stay standing. Get people back to work through construction projects. They did this with a lot of different mechanisms. One of them was called the Works Progress Administration. And this Works Progress Administration was proposed to build the first ever municipal baseball stadium at Fontenelle Park. Everett Dodds. Everett Dodds was the architect who designed the Middaloosa neighborhood. Every single house almost. He designed it from his own scratch. He also designed in the 1930s the Logan Fontenelle Housing Projects, the first public housing in Omaha. It was actually an architectural marvel for its time. Well, they hired him to design the municipal baseball stadium at Fontenelle Park, and he put it up on plans. Beautiful plans. Kind of a brutalist architectural style, with some you know combined with the art modern, art deco style of the times. They saw the stadium serving as a polo field, a baseball field for amateurs during the day, and a professional baseball field at night. And that year, they proposed moving the Omaha Cardinals baseball team to Fontenelle Park, right there in North Omaha. Well, the neighborhood didn't like it. By then, by the 1930s, the neighborhood had filled in. It actually mostly filled in the 1910s and 20s, all up the Fairfax area the area around the Nebraska School for the Deaf, the Benson neighborhood, the Omaha View neighborhood to the north. And they did not want that traffic at their park. So they rejected it. They protested it, and it worked. Alas, baseball did not take off from Fontenelle Park, but not before that. In 1939, that same year, a heck of a year for baseball at Fontenelle Park, the American Legion World Series was held there. Teams from across the United States came, including Omaha's team, which whipped a team from Wisconsin in order to win the World Series, the American Legion World Series. American Legion World Series has an interesting relationship with Major League Baseball. A lot of professional players from the 1930s onwards actually played through the American Legion World Series uh, and then went up to the bigs. And in 1939, they would have played in Omaha, Nebraska at Fontenelle Park right there in North Omaha, Nebraska. After World War II, you know, uh, interesting time. World War II got the engines going again. Omaha knew that it was going to boom in the late 40s and early 50s. Mayor Rosenblatt himself floated the idea of the stadium again. 1947, he wanted it to be called the Olympic Stadium. Neighbors rejected it again. They did not want that. So Rosenblatt said, fine, we'll build it on South 10th. And up it went. The Rosenblatt Stadium. Well, Steve, at the same time, the golf course kept its popularity. And baseball kept being played there into the 1960s. But something happened in the 60s and 70s, into the 80s and even the 90s, when white flight struck the neighborhoods around Fontenelle Park, and the neighborhood park that it was changed. 
violence and crime increased at the park and people didn't want to go golf there. The baseball teams started finding other fields to play on. And Fontenot Park became dejected, rejected, and ugly. It wasn't a fun place. In the 1990s, the North High Vikings baseball team reclaimed the park, though. And from the 1990s all the way to today, they've been taking care of it. They juiced it up and made it great again. They play their games there and take a lot of pride in their space. That beautiful blue and gold shining like a bright, bright sunshine in the sky. In 2019, the city of Omaha finished restoring and rejuvenating the park's physical areas. They did this with a pretty radical step, though, Steve. They took out that golf course that was originally established in the 1920s. They took it out entirely. They replaced it with tall grasses and trails. They put in walking trails all around, more picnic areas, more trees, places to fish, a new cross-country track for high school and middle school students. You know, Creighton Prep's cross-country team runs there. They put in a Frisbee golf course. They have a new facility for kids' programs. The pavilion's being kept up really well now. And Fontenelle Park has reclaimed some of its glory. That baseball history has largely been lost, though, and isn't acknowledged by a lot of Omaha fans. The College World Series could have been happening every year in North Omaha. And Fontenelle Park could have kept those fireworks going forever. Alas, they stopped in 1974, and they've never happened again. Today, the park has kept its glory or reclaimed it, and you should go check it out for its history, for its beauty, and for all that's cool about the history of Fontenelle Park in North Omaha. Thanks for listening to the North Omaha History Podcast with noted author and historian Adam Fletcher Sassy. Join us next week as Adam takes you on another guided tour through Omaha's dynamic past.